Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through the Clo 3D software. I'm going to be covering almost every single part of the interface, but I'm not going to spend too much time on any single part. I just want to make sure you know where you can find everything and you have a pretty comprehensive understanding of the software as a whole. So let's jump into it. The first thing I want to call out is the two main windows that you see in the software. This window over here is called the 3D viewing window, and this is where you see your garment constructed in 3D. This is the 2D window, and this is where you're actually going to make edits to your pattern that are then going to be reflected in the 3D window. Now before we go any farther, let's quickly talk about navigation and controls. To orbit around our avatar, we're simply going to right click, hold, and drag our mouse around. To zoom in and out, we're going to use our scroll wheel, and to pan around the seam, we're going to hold down our scroll wheel. To activate any object in the scene, we're simply going to point and click. And if we want to move objects around, we are going to use this gizmo here that lets us rotate and move objects in the 3D space. Finally, if I want to reset my camera positioning, I can use buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get different preset angles of this garment, and 2 is front facing. And navigation in the 2D window is very similar. We can scroll in and out with our scroll wheel. If we hold down the scroll wheel, we can pan around. And then pointing and clicking is simply the way to move things around on the 2D window. Now each window has a set of tools on the outside. These are our 3D tools and these over here are our 2D tools. Let's take a look at some of the most important tools on our 3D toolbar. First of all, we have simulate. When simulation is active, we are able to manipulate our garments in real time. Simulation also means that sewing is active, so when we click simulate, pieces are going to come together. If I want to start and stop simulate without clicking on this button, I can simply click the spacebar. The next tool I want to talk about is the pin tool. The pin tool, when selected, gives us the ability to take a point or multiple points of this garment and edit them separately from the entire garment. So if I were to click simulate now, the garment would stretch to these pins. So it's essentially freezing a point of the garment. The tack tool is very similar to the pin tool, but there's actually two options for tacking. One is tacking fabric to fabric, and the other is tacking fabric to an avatar. So if we click at tacking the fabric to the avatar, we click on the fabric, then we click on the avatar and click simulate. It's basically going to pull this fabric to the point that you've pinned to the avatar. Next, we have the fold tool. When we click on the fold tool, it gives us the ability to select any internal line and fold the fabric over this line. This is really helpful when it comes to finishing hems. All right, let's keep moving. Now we're not gonna go down every single tool on this toolbar, but a few more I find particularly helpful are relating to patterns and graphics. If I click this tool, it's going to let me upload an image as a graphic like I did here with this logo. And then if I go to the tool above it, transform graphic, it's going to let me edit the graphics that I've placed on my garments in terms of size and rotation. Now these two buttons are for applying and transforming graphics. The button above is editing textures, and this button is only gonna do anything if you already have a texture image applied to your fabric, which we will come back to. All right, and below our graphics and texture tools, we have our button tools. If we click on this middle button tool, it's going to let us point and click and apply buttons to this garment. If we left click, hold it down and choose buttonhole, it's going to let us apply buttonholes to this garment. And if we choose this tool, fasten buttons, it's going to let us attach buttons to buttonholes and basically fasten them without us having to do anything else. All right, and continuing down the line, we have our zipper tools beneath buttons. If we click on this tool right here, it's going to let us put a zipper between two pattern pieces. We simply just click, double click, click, double click, and it's going to create this zipper for us. Once we click simulate, it's going to stitch up the zipper. And below zippers, we have piping and binding tools. These tools operate very similar to the zippers, so I'm going to skip over them, but those tools are right here. All right, so we made it through the most important tools on the 3D window over here. Let's go ahead and jump to the other side and talk about the most important tools that pertain to the 2D window. All right, the first tool we're gonna to talk about over here is this rectangle, and this is basically going to help us create pattern pieces. So as I can see, if I use this tool to draw a rectangle, I'm now going to see a 3D piece appear in the 3D window. Now I can also hold down this button with my left mouse and create spirals, ellipses, rectangles, or polygons. So I can actually draw custom shapes like this. 
And as you've probably figured, creating these shapes are how you're going to create the pattern pieces that we're going to sew up in the 3D window. So to move these pattern pieces around, I'm going to choose this tool up top, which is Transform Pattern. And it's going to let me grab an entire pattern piece and move it around. If I want to just grab a singular point on the pattern piece, I'm going to go to this tool below it, Edit Pattern, which is going to let me move singular points on the shapes that we've drawn. If I want to add points to existing pattern pieces, I'm going to come up here to this tool again, hold down my left mouse, and then come over to Add Point Split Line. Now I can click anywhere on the pattern and it's going to divide it in half. Now if we come back to our Edit Pattern tool and hold down our left mouse, we're going to see that a whole bunch of options come up. Edit Pattern is what we just did. We can also add points split line, which is going to let us add points to existing patterns. Now, if we go back to edit pattern, we can manipulate those points as well. If we come back to this edit pattern tool, hold down our left mouse again, we can also choose edit curvature or edit curve point buttons. Curve point is going to let us grab a singular point and draw it out to make it a curve. Edit curvature is going to let us just adjust the line as a whole. And guys, just a quick call out, any icon that has this little arrow in the corner, you can hold on your left mouse and expand the menu. Moving on to more of our pattern making tools in the 2D window, let's click on the internal line tool. This internal line tool is going to give us the ability to draw internal lines on existing pattern pieces. I can either create clear, closed shapes, or if I just draw a singular line, I click enter to solidify that line. And again, we have the little arrow here, so if we hold it down, we can see many other shapes that we can create inside our patterns. All right, let's continue on with talking about sewing. So if we grab this tool here, this is going to be our segment sewing tool. This tool is going to let us sew a segment to another segment. What we can see that does in the 3D space is basically attach these two pattern pieces with these 3D threads. And below the segment sewing tool is something called free sewing. And if we click on this tool, it's going to give us the ability to sew freely around pattern pieces. We can go across multiple segments. And finally, we have our edit sewing tool up top. If we click on this tool, we are going to be able to select any seam we want, drag it around to edit it, or simply click delete. Now you may have noticed the same sewing tools are actually in the 3D window. And that's because you can also sew in 3D. I just simply click drag, double click, click, drag, double click, and you can see I now have a seam line formed. I definitely recommend sewing in the 2D window, however, it's just a little more accurate. And on the note of tools that are in both windows, you probably have noticed that we have graphics and texture tools here as well. These are going to operate the same way also, but they're going to let you make edits in the 2D window. All right, guys, and those are the most important tools from this 2D tool menu. Of course, there's some we didn't cover. If there's a few that you might use sometimes, like this trace baseline tool um, or these top stitching tools over here. Uh, but again, I'm just covering the most important things that I think you're gonna use all the time. And I am breaking this tutorial down to two parts. In part one, we're going to cover everything in the middle of the screen here. And then in part two, we're going to cover everything on the top and the edges. So let's round out this tutorial with talking about these tools in the 3D and 2D window. So all these tools relate to how we are viewing this 3D scene. The first tool is rendering. So if we click this on, it's going to give us a somewhat accurate preview of how this garment would look rendered. And to turn it off, we simply click the button again. Now if we go down to this little t-shirt icon and hover over it, we're going to see a lot of new options expand horizontally. This first one here, when we click it, we're going to notice that the garment disappears. This is basically toggling on and off visibility of the garment. And now all of these icons following that are going to toggle on and off visibility of elements of the garment. For example, the seam lines, internal lines, base lines. If we have sewing visibility, the little threads that we can see in the 3D window, um, pins, anything that relates to the garment, we can toggle on and off that visibility right here. And just below that, we have this tool here, which is our 3D trim visibility. Um, if we have buttons, seam taping, piping, anything like that, this is where we're gonna be able to toggle it on and off. Um, but keep in mind, these buttons aren't going to do anything unless if I actually have that trim in the scene. 
So this will do nothing unless if there's actually buttons on this garment. All right, so let's keep moving down. Here we have an icon with a person on it. You guessed it, that is avatar display. Here we can toggle on and off the avatar visibility. We can also toggle on and off the arrangement points. And arrangement points are what is going to help us place the pattern pieces around the avatar nicely before we simulate the garment all together. Um, so this really helps us when we're sewing and placing the garment on the avatar, um, but they're not that great to keep on. So we wanna be able to toggle those on and off. And then we also have this button here, which is going to let us adjust the joints of an avatar. So if you're looking to change the positions of the arms or legs or anything, this is one way to do it. And when you toggle on this little icon right here, it's going to do it symmetrically. All right, and jumping down to our fabric icon here, the first icon in this pop-out is thin textured viewing. When we click on it, we're going to see that our fabric almost becomes two pieces of paper connected by stitches. And if we toggle back on the thickness, we're going to see that it actually looks like a thick garment now. So even though thin textured viewing might make the simulation run a tiny bit faster, I still recommend you stay in thick textured viewing, um, not only because it looks better, but also because when you export this garment, it's going to export it by default to whichever um, thickness view you have. And we don't want any paper thin garments. And moving on to the icon below, which is another piece of fabric. Um, but when we toggle on these views, we are going to see that it starts to show us where the garment is too tight and where it is too loose, um, as well as where it's perfectly fitting. We can see by these numbers right here. So these maps are important if you are working with fit, but if you're not working with fit, you can ignore these. Now below that, we have a few more avatar tools. This is basically just going to choose how we see the avatar. Do we see it as textured? Do we see the polygons? Or do we have just a smooth surface? Um, and that's completely up to your preference. And finally, we have our environment display. This is going to show and hide things like lighting or if you have a wind effect node in your scene. Um, also, it can toggle on and off the shadow here on the ground or the grid. Um, so these aren't too important, but just so you know, those are where your environmental viewing tools are. All right, guys, so those are the tools relating to 3D viewing. Let's talk about the couple of tools that relate to 2D viewing. All right, guys, and first we have our 2D sewing visibility buttons. If we toggle on and off this first one, we're gonna see that the 2D representations of our seam lines disappear. Um, it's up to your personal preference if you want this on and off. Um, next to that, we have top stitching. If we have top stitching in this garment, we can hide it or turn it on by clicking this button. All right, and this next one is 2D pattern display. We have things here that we can toggle off like baselines, seam allowance, if there's any grading in your scene, um, but there's nothing too important in this menu. And then down here we have our annotations. So if we have any annotations in the scene, we can go ahead and toggle them on and off here. Now this one below with the little fabric icon I think is pretty important. Um, you can change the visibility of your pattern pieces. For example, if you have to stack things on top of each other to trace them, you can turn on translucent viewing. You can also turn on this right here, which is a little bit less than translucent, but still see-through, which I think can be really helpful. Um, you could go back to opaque. You could actually turn on the, the mesh visibility so you could see how kind of dense this mesh is for these pattern pieces. Um, so I think this tool is pretty helpful, but I typically keep it in opaque or somewhat translucent. All right, guys, so now that we've made it through all the 3D viewing and 2D viewing tools, there's only one last thing I wanna show you in this part one, and that is having to do with right-clicking. So right-clicking on a pattern piece in the 3D window is going to give us a whole bunch of new options. A couple of the most important ones are deactivate pattern and sewing. This is basically going to make this piece non-existent until you right-click activate it. We can also freeze a piece, which means when we simulate, the piece isn't able to be manipulated like all the other garment parts of the garment. Then we can unfreeze. We can strengthen, which is going to remove some of the wrinkles from our garment and kind of make this piece a little bit stronger, more stiff. We can go ahead and right click unstrengthen. Solidify is sort of like freezing. It kind of locks in the general shape of the garment. However, it still can be manipulated. And these tools are all really important to tweaking the drape of your garment. 
And another tool that's really important in this menu is called Flipping Normals. If you click on it, you're probably not going to see that anything happens. But when this tool is important is if you're ever in thin textured viewing and you see a piece that looks kind of gray like this, it most likely means it's flipped inside out. So the best way to fix it is simply right click flip normal. So think about it as the backside of this fabric is going to be dark and the outside is going to be white. You want to make sure the white is always showing. If you ever have any gray areas when you're in thin textured viewing, make sure to flip the normal. Now there are a few more tools that can be helpful in this menu, like resetting the 2D and 3D arrangement. It's going to reset your garment. Um, the superimposing tools can be helpful when you're working with placing things on top of each other. Um, but I think those are the most important ones that we covered. So let's do the same thing for the 2D window. Now in the 2D window, if we click on a pattern piece, you're going to see that we have some different options. We obviously have our classic copy and paste, and we also have mirror paste for when we want to paste something but flipped. We can lock something, which means it's no longer going to be able to be moved in the 2D window. Down here we have some more classic tools like order, rotate, and flip. And if we look above that, we're going to see some of the same tools that we just saw in the 3D window. So yes, we can actually strengthen things from the 2D window as well. And to wrap this up, let's quickly talk about some of the most important tools, layer cloning, as well as the tools that relate to linked editing and symmetry. If I right click on a piece and select layer clone over, it's going to give me a perfect copy of that piece superimposed onto the existing piece and already sewn up. This can be really helpful in situations like this hood where I have two layers of fabric, but I don't want to have to manually try to sew it up and make it all fit together myself. So layer cloning can be really, really helpful. And finally, linked editing. So as you can see, all of my pattern pieces have a line in the middle of them. That basically means my pieces are symmetrically editable. So when I click one side and drag it out, the same thing is gonna happen to the other side. I find this is definitely the best way to create your patterns because you can be sure that everything is perfectly symmetrical and you only have to edit one side, but you can be sure that the same changes happen to the other side. Now, if I want to remove the linked editing, I can just right click and click remove linked editing and that line will disappear. Now to demonstrate creating linked editing from scratch, I'm going to take a simple rectangle, choose my edit pattern tool and right click on an edge. Then I'm simply going to go unfold with symmetric editing. And it's that simple. Now whatever I do to this side is going to happen to this side. If I right click on this edge, there's other, there's other options in the menu that you can see pop up, such as split, which is going to let me split this line into two, either by length or perfectly in the middle. I'm also going to see options like change length that I can actually manually change the length of this line to make sure it's exact. Um, and a few other things that I can do by right clicking the edge of a pattern. So as you can see, right clicking in each of these windows can be very important to revealing a whole new menu of tools that will help you make your garments look awesome. All right guys, hopefully you found that video really helpful. So we've covered the most important things here in the 2D and 3D windows, but as you can see, there's definitely more to the Clo 3D software. So go ahead and jump to the next video if you'd like to keep learning with me.